Welcome once again, my friends, and thank you for listening to an old storyteller. I wanted to apologize to all my subscribers about not being able to uh, post my video today on time. Uh, life just happened, so that unfortunately that's what happened. So again, I want to apo apologize for this, and I will do my best in the future for this not to happen. Thank you for your patience. And now, on to our tale of the Vampire Cat of Nabashima. Enjoy! There is a tradition in the Nabashima family that, many years ago, the Prince of Heizen was bewitched and cursed by a cat that had been kept by one of his retainers. This prince had in his house a lady of rare beauty called Otoyo. Amongst all his ladies, she was his favorite and there was none who could rival her charm and accomplishments. One day the prince went out into the garden with Otoyo and remained enjoying the fragrance of the flowers until sunset. When they returned to the palace, never noticing that they were being followed by a large cat. Having parted with her lord, Otoyo retired to her own room and went to bed. At midnight she awoke with a start and became aware of a huge cat that crouched watching her, and when she cried out, the beast sprang upon her, and, fixing its cruel teeth in her delicate throat, throttled her to death. What a piteous end for so fair a dame, the darling of her prince's heart, to die suddenly, bitten to death by a cat! Then the cat, having scratched out a grave under the veranda, buried the corpse of Otoyo, and assuming her form, began to bewitch the prince. But my lord the prince knew nothing of all this, and little thought that the beautiful creature who caressed and fondled him was an impish and foul beast that had slain his mistress, and assumed her shape in order to drain out his life's blood. Day by day, as time went on, the prince's strength dwindled away. The color of his face was changed, and became pale and livid and he was as a man suffering from a deadly sickness. Seeing this, his counselors and his wife became greatly alarmed, so they summoned the physician, prescribed various remedies for him. But the more medicine he took, the more serious did his illness appear, and no treatment was of any avail. But most of all did he suffer in the night time, when his sleep would be troubled and disturbed by hideous dreams. In consequence of this, his counselors nightly appointed a hundred of his retainers to sit up and watch over him. But, strange to say, towards ten o'clock on the very first night that the watch was set, the guard was seized with a sudden and unaccountable drowsiness, which they could not resist, until one by one every man had fallen asleep. Then the false Otoyo came in and harassed the prince until morning. The following night the same thing occurred, and the prince was subjected to the imp's tyranny, while his guard slept helplessly around him. Night after night this was repeated, until at last three of the prince's counselors determined themselves to sit up on guard and see whether they could overcome the mysterious drowsiness. But they fared no better than the others, and by ten o'clock were fast asleep. The next day the three counselors held a solemn conclave, and their chief, one Ishahaya Buzen, said, This is a marvelous thing, that a guard of a hundred men should thus be overcome by sleep. Of a surety, the spell that is upon my lord and upon his guard must be the work of witchcraft. Now, as all our efforts are of no avail, let us seek out Ruiten, the chief priest of the temple called Yon In, and beseech him to put up prayers for the recovery of my lord. And the other counselors approved of what Ishihama Buzin had said. They went to the priest Royton and engaged him to recite litanies that the prince might be restored to health. So it came to pass that Royton, the chief priest of Myo In, offered up prayers nightly for the prince. One night at the ninth hour, which is midnight, when he had finished his religious exercises and was preparing to lie down to sleep, 
he fancied that he heard a noise outside in the garden, as if someone were washing himself at the well. Deeming this passing strange, he looked down from the window. There in the moonlight he saw a handsome young soldier, some twenty-four years of age, washing himself, who, when he had finished cleaning himself and had put on his clothes, stood before the figure of Buddha and prayed fervently for the recovery of my lord the prince. Royton looked on with admiration, and the young man, when he had made an end of his prayer, was going away. But the priest stopped him, calling out to him, Sir, I pray you to tarry a little. I have something to say to you. At your reverence's service, what may you please to want? Pray be so good as to step up here and have a little talk. By your reverence, leave. With this he went upstairs. Then Royton said, Sir, I cannot conceal my admiration for you, being so young a man, should have so loyal a spirit. I am Royton, chief priest of this temple. Whom am I engaging in praying for the recovery of my lord? Pray, what is your name? My name, sir, Ito Sowa, and I am serving in the infantry of Nabashima. Since my lord has been sick, my one desire has been to assist in nursing him. But, being only a simple soldier, I am not of sufficient rank to come into his presence. So I have no resource but to pray to the gods of the country, and to Buddha that my lord may regain his health. When Royton heard this, he shed tears in admiration of the fidelity of Ito Soda, and said, Your purpose is indeed a good one, but what a strange sickness this is that my lord is afflicted with. Every night he suffers from horrible dreams, and the retainers who sit up with him are all seized with a mysterious sleep so that no one can keep awake. It is very wonderful. Yes, replied Sota, after a moment's reflection, this certainly must be witchcraft. If I could but obtain leave to sit up one night with the prince, I would fain see whether I could not resist this drowsiness and detect the goblin. At last the priest said, I am in relations of friendship with Ishahaya Buzin, the chief counselor of the prince. I will speak to him of you and of your loyalty, and will intercede with him that you may attain your wish. Indeed, sir, I am most thankful. I am not prompted by any vain thought of self-advancement should I succeed. All I wish is for the recovery of my lord. I commend myself to your kind favor. Well then, tomorrow night I will take you with me to the counselor's house. Thank you, sir, and farewell and so they part. On the following evening, Ito Sota returned to the temple of myo in and having found Royton, accompanied him to the house of Ishihara Buzin. Then the priest, leaving Sota outside, went in to converse with the counselor and inquire after the prince's health. I pray, sir, how is my lord? Is he in any better condition since I have been offering up prayers for him? Deed, no. His illness is very severe. We are certain that he must be the victim of some foul sorcery, but as there are no means of keeping a guard awake after ten o'clock, we cannot catch sight of the goblin, so we are in the greatest trouble. I feel deeply for you. It must be most distressing. However, I have something to tell you. I think that I have found a man who will detect the goblin, and I have brought him with me. D. Who is the man? Well, he is one of my lord's foot soldiers, named Ito Sota, a faithful fellow, and I trust that you will grant his request to be permitted to sit up with my lord. Well, certainly. It is wonderful to find so much loyalty and zeal in a common soldier, replied Ishihara Buzin, after a moment's reflection. Still, it is impossible to allow a man of such low rank Form the office of watching over my lord. It is true that he is but a common soldier, urged the priest, but why not raise his rank in consideration of his fidelity, and then let him mount guard? It would be time enough to promote him after my lord's recovery. But come, let me see this Ito Sota, that I may know what manner of man he is. If he pleases me, I will consult with the other counselors, and perhaps we may grant his request. 
I will bring him in forthwith, replied Royton, who thereupon went out to fetch the young man. When he returned, the priest presented Ito Soto to the counselor, who looked at him attentively, and, being pleased with his comely and gentle appearance, said, So, I hear that you are anxious to be permitted to mount guard in my lord's room at night. Well, I must consult with the other counselors, and we will see what can be done for you. When the young soldier heard this, he was greatly elated, and took his leave, after warmingly thanked Royton, who had helped him to gain his object. The next day the counselors held a meeting, and sent for Ito Sota, and told him that he might keep watch with the other retainers that very night. So he went his way in high spirits, and at nightfall, having made all his preparations, took his place among the hundred gentlemen who were on duty in the prince's bedroom. Now the prince slept in the center of the room, and the hundred guards around him sat keeping themselves awake with entertaining conversations and pleasant conceits. But as ten o'clock approached, they began to doze off as they sat, and in spite of all their endeavoring to keep one another awake, by degrees they all fell asleep. Inosota, after a while, felt an irresistible desire to sleep creeping over him, and, though he tried by all sorts of ways to rouse himself, he saw that there was no help for it. But, by resorting to an extreme measure, for which he had already made his preparations, drawing out a piece of oil paper which he had brought with him, and spreading it out over the mats, he sat down upon it. Then he took the small knife which he carried in the sheath of his dirk and stuck it into his own thigh. For a while the pain of the wound kept him awake, but as the slumber by which he was assaulted was the work of sorcery, little by little he became drowsy again. Then he twisted the knife round and round in his thigh, so that the pain becoming very violent, he was proof against the feeling of sleepiness and kept a faithful watch. Now, the oil paper which he had spread under his legs was in order to prevent the blood, which might spurt from his wound, from defiling the mats. So Itosota remained awake, but the rest of the guards slept, and as he watched, suddenly the sliding doors of the prince's room were drawn open, and he saw a figure coming in stealthily, and, as it drew nearer, the form was that of a marvelously beautiful woman some twenty-three years of age. Cautiously she looked around her, and when she saw that all the guard were asleep, she smiled an ominous smile and was going up to the prince's bedside, when she perceived that in one corner of the room there was a man yet awake. This seemed to startle her, but she went up to Sota and said, I am not used to seeing you here. Who are you? My name is Ito Sota, and this is the first night that I have been on guard. A troublesome office, truly. Why, here are all the rest of the guard asleep. How is it that you alone are awake? You are a trusty watchman. There is nothing to boast about. I am asleep myself, fast and sound. What is that wound on your knee? It is all red with blood. Oh, I felt very sleepy. So I stuck my knife into my thigh, and the pain of it has kept me awake. What wondrous loyalty, said the lady. Is it not the duty of a retainer to lay down his life for his master? Is such a scratch as this worth thinking about? Then the lady went up to the sleeping prince and said, How fares it, my lord, tonight? But the prince, worn out with sickness, made no reply. But Sota was watching her eagerly, guessed that it was O Toyo, and made up his mind that if she attempted to harass the prince, he would kill her on the spot. The goblin, however, which was in the form of O Toyo, had been tormenting the prince every night, and had come again that night for no other purpose, was defeated by the watchfulness of Ito Sota, for when she drew near to the sick man, thinking to put her spells upon him, she would turn and look behind her, and there she saw Ito Sota glaring at her. So she had no help for it but to go away again and leave the prince undisturbed. 
At last the day broke, and the other officers, when they awoke and opened their eyes, saw that Ito Sota had kept awake by stabbing himself in the thigh, and they were greatly ashamed and went home crestfallen. That morning Ito Sota went to the house of Ishahaya Buzen and told him all that had occurred the previous night. The counselors were all loud in their praises for Ito Sota's behavior and ordered him to keep watch again that night. At the same hour, the false Otoyo came and looked all around the room, and all the guards were asleep, except Ito Sota, who was wide awake. And so, being again frustrated, she returned to her own apartments. Now, as since Ito Sota had been on guard, the prince had passed quiet nights, his sickness began to get better, and there was great joy in the palace and Soda was promoted and rewarded with an estate. In the meanwhile, O Toyo, seeing that her nightly visits bore no fruit, kept away, and from that time forth the night guard were no longer subject to fits of drowsiness. This coincidence struck Soda very strange, so he went to Ishihaya Buzen and told him that of a certainty this O Toyo was none other than a goblin. Ishahaya Buzin reflected for a while and said, Well then, how shall we kill the foul thing? I will go to the creature's room, as if nothing were the matter, and try to kill her. But in case she should try to escape, I will beg you to order eight men to stop outside and lie in wait for her. Having agreed upon this plan, Soda went at nightfall to Otoyo's apartment, pretending to have been sent with a message for the prince. When she saw him arrive, she said, What message have you brought me from my lord? Oh, nothing in particular. Be so look as to look at this letter. And as he spoke, he drew near to her, and suddenly drawing his dirk, cut at her. But the goblin, springing back, seized a halberd, glaring fiercely at Soda, said, How dare you behave like this to one of your lord's ladies? I will have you dismissed and she tried to strike Soda with the halberd. But Soda fought desperately with his dirk, and the goblin, seeing that she was no match for him, threw away the halberd, and from a beautiful woman became suddenly transformed into a cat, which, springing up the sides of the room, jumped onto the roof. Ishihaya Buzin and his eight men who were watching outside shot at the cat, but missed it, and the beast made good its escape. So the cat fled to the mountain, and did much mischief among the surrounding people, until at last the prince of Heisen ordered a great hunt, and the beast was killed. But the prince recovered from his sickness, and Ito Sota was richly rewarded. Thank you once again for listening to this story. If you enjoyed this story, please press that like button. Also, please help an old storyteller out by subscribing to my channel. The next story will be posted in a few days, so until then, may your story continue to be a good one.